Hi there, it's Dr. Joyland Sparkles and welcome to Your Power Hour. This is your time to put what's on your mind, on my mind, and we'll put our heads and hearts together and try to come up with, no, we will, come up with a way to go from stuck to happy as fuck in as short amount of time as possible, all right? We're not trying, we're doing. That's what this is about. And today is going to be an adventure because I don't even really know what I'm going to say because I am coming off of a really amazing camping trip and it was so nice to be out in space, in nature, and my brain still hasn't completely come back to this reality and so the coherence might be a little bit uh, lacking today. So I apologize, but let's get to it because always there's something to be gained. Now, yesterday was 4th of July. For those in the United States, that is our Independence Day. And I don't know if it was four years ago or what, I wrote a blog about this day, July 4th. We celebrate it as Independence Day. And inaccurately, a lot of people think that that means it's because that's the day we won our independence. It's not. It's the day we declared it. Because it's always the energy first. The way we know ourselves is how we're going to be, how we're going to present, how we're going to see ourselves and how other people are going to see us. It has to start inside first. That's why happiness is an inside job. Lots of people chase it thinking that I'm going to go after it. And when I get that thing, then I'll be happy. But it's the happiness comes from inside of knowing who you really are, knowing that I happen to things. I am present. I am here. That's what happiness is. That's why happiness can actually include sadness. They are not juxtaposed. It's because they are, they can happen simultaneously if sadness is what's actually present and we're willing to allow it and not become a victim to it. So that's getting really deep, really fast. Like we just jumped into the deep end. So let me back off a little bit and I'll talk. I named this ghost stories. That's why I talked about this power hour because you sit around the campfire like I just did for the last four nights and it's incredible and you just get to have a little time to think, to be quiet, to just watch the fire, to then have fire, fireside chats like Franklin Roosevelt used to have um, and, and have this chit chat of sometimes it's meaningless banter and jokes and sometimes it gets into more of the philosophical wonderings and musings and, and existential questions. Anything goes. That's what's great about campfires. So when we go camping, because I, I just did, so really, okay, so this is about, this is about me. I'm like, all right. A lot of times, or vacation, what it is is it's a break from a routine. So it actually allows us some space to see if the routine, how we're operating we get to see that it's not us. That's not all we are. Because we break the routine, we step out of our habitual surroundings and regimen and timing, maybe even the things that we eat, the people that we're around, and we get to witness, if you're willing to, take it this deep, to see that you still exist outside of those things, so you must be more than those things. And when you decide to take an adventure or a vacation and you go into nature, it's amazing because nature is a space of no judgment. She has none. Everything that is, is, and it's perfect, whole, and complete as is. It changes, that's great. Things stay for a really long time, that's great. It's just a witness of itself and everything is okay. When we move into that space, when we go into nature, this is why hugging a tree or going into nature a lot of times is a tool for recalibrating your nervous system, of calming down, of reacquainting with yourself. Because when you go into that space, you will immediately relax. Because a lot of what's making us tense and tight is all this judgment that's coming at us and from inside us. And when we go into a space, it's almost like you just air it out. So you get to relax. It's a great way to ground when you're all up in your head and you're just like super frazzled, just like I am now. I didn't get a chance to take my walk before. So maybe that should have been a lesson to me. Go outside first. So go outside. Take a break. Ground. Get rooted into yourself, into being part of something greater. 
Awesome. Now I'm going to say, for those of you who know, and maybe have had a similar experience, you'll go out in nature, and at first it'll be really relaxing, and you'll be like, oh, this is so great. And then the restlessness sets in. And then all of a sudden it almost seems like there's more judgment. You have more thoughts. This also happened with COVID, you'll notice. Like, at first there's this frenzy. Then people kind of settled in to the quarantine and were like, hey, I could use some extra sleep. And then all of a sudden we got real restless. I gotta get out of here. Because we started to become aware of how many judgments we have coming from inside. You've gone to a space of no judgment, so there's not as many coming from outside being in a soup of people where you're always kind of surrounded by it. And it just feels normal. Then it goes away and you're like, whoa, that's so relaxing. And then all of a sudden you get this restlessness and an awareness of a whole lot more feelings. And it's like there's more or lots of mental activity. Like, what is that about? It's because now there is nothing else coming at you and you start to become aware of what's coming up from inside. Now, when I'm talking about ghost stories, though, we're talking about Independence Day. Attachment's the source of all suffering. And if we're really going to be independent, we really want freedom, we first have to look at what are we becoming free of, from. And for the most part, because those of us living in the Western world are not highly oppressed, even though sometimes we really want to make an argument about it because uh, that's the popular thing to do, we really aren't. The freedom that we're looking for is a freedom from our judgments, from labels. And we so want to say it's coming from outside, and sometimes it is. But that wouldn't even bother us if it wasn't also matching one that we had that resonated with that inside. And so when we go into nature for a while, we start to become aware of these things, or that's what meditation and mindfulness training will do, is start to get us aware of these things that we're generating. It's all of our thoughts. It's our thoughts about who we are and what is happening to us. And then depending on the survival uh, rating that the subconscious puts with it, we'll have an emotional response to that as well. But here's the thing about thoughts. If we're attached to them, we're not free. We are a victim of our mind. Not anyone else, just ourselves. And who's the mind? Well, it'll be our past lifetimes, if you believe in those. So it'll be a lot of generational training, okay? It'll be child brain, infant brain. You know, the one that says, oh, it's all my fault. And do you know why kids do that? Because if it is, then they can fix it. Oh, my parents got divorced. It was all my fault. So if I'm the problem, I can be better and then they'll get back together. That's how kids do it because they are appropriately, age appropriately, egocentric and think that it's all about me. But if we carry that into adulthood, we're just assholes. Okay, egocentric assholes. It's not age appropriate anymore. And it's not accurate. Because there was so much more going on, we had incomplete information and functioned as best as we could for the age that we were, and, and again, appropriate, but it's, it isn't working. And then that keeps going so that everything that we're getting, all the information we're getting, that we're using to build our thought platforms on, a lot of it's incomplete. A lot of it's filtered through our insecurity that is our survival mechanisms, that are the things that were told to us, that were issued to us when we were little, that we've been keeping them because we thought they were us and we didn't take time to examine them. And so now they're just such an inherent part of us, they're just there all the time. So that becomes a filter. So that all these things, like, so that when any energy is coming at us, it's coming through those filters and then our mind, our subconscious, just associates stuff. Like I said, it almost gives it like a survival rating and it associates it with this memory, with this memory. And then all of a sudden we have a thought that we become aware of that usually has an emotion and then we are set. And we can entertain for beneficial or non-beneficial reasons basically indefinitely. Now, I have a very unique opinion that we all say we are motivated by pleasure and pain. And actually, pain is a greater driver. We tend to avoid pain even more than we tend to seek pleasure. And a lot of life will look like this. This is how we learn is when it's painful enough, we will. I just actually think that when it comes to really habitual things like that, it's boredom. When we finally become bored enough with whatever crappy 
thought patterns we've had. We finally decide we can set it down and try something new, novel. And maybe that's the relation with pleasure and pain, but sometimes we just do things and we've done them so often and we finally start to see that it's not getting us what it is that we want, even though we've tried it in a lot of different iterations and variations, to where I finally like, I just like something else. That's the beginning of freedom. That's the declaration. I'm going to have something else. And then from that moment on, you actually start to see yourself as I'm having something else. I'm someone who has something else. That's when you start to build a new way, a new future. Now... With this, why I say ghost stories is because we have to be able to like, you know, when I'm, I'm trying to put all these thoughts together of Independence Day, ghost stories, being in nature and space and camping and, and how to bring all of these ideas sort of together, then when we're talking about Independence Day, you know, for the United States at least or for nations, then it means that you don't have a reference point. And that it is sovereign and autonomous, it is able to make decisions for and by itself. That's actually a human need. It's actually the truth of who we are that we sort of got conditioned and forgot about. But what will also happen to a lot of nations is they will then start to create an identity, which is natural. It's what the ego does, and it's, it's actually just part of this reality. So in and of itself is not bad or wrong. But when it identifies so strongly with the past that it doesn't allow itself to change, you will see that inevitably that entity, structure, institution, country, government, whatever, will start to crumble. Because change is the only constant here. And so if we're looking to be independent, we will also have to be free of our past. We can have a history because unless you wipe your memory, you're going to remember some things. Some things, this is the way things happen. This is the, I don't know why I can't think of the word. It starts with a C. Chronology. There it is. The chronology of events. This is how I felt this way and that way. But what healing is, how we know that we've healed, is when we can tell it like a ghost story. It doesn't have charge. We're not still overwhelmed with irritation, frustration, anger, feeling oppressed, feeling like we need to do something. We can tell it as if it's just like something that is in the past and it doesn't have this emotional charge. That's how we know we're free. And we can do that even when we talk about our own personal histories. To not be an accumulation of events that happen to us. Sure, some things will shape us, but they don't have to determine us anymore. They might have steered your life in this direction when you thought you were going in this direction, and they might have given you insight into this uh, emotional experience and existential questions and, and things like that, versus if it didn't. But... It is things that we can't change, and so it is to start having gratitude for all of these things instead of analyzing them, wishing they were different, still having a lot of thoughts about it, like an evaluation of how unfair it was. And, and here's also where I'm saying, you're going to have all those feelings in the in-between. It's just we know that we're healed when the charge drops. That's how you know is when your history, you can tell it like a ghost story to where it's just a neat story of you. And sometimes, and, and I do my best to give tools for how to get through this faster because the in-between can be quite challenging. But that sometimes the way we do it is to tell it in different ways, shapes, and forms. But what we can always do, like I always say with journaling, is whenever you're telling it, to tell it with the intent to release. Tell it with the intent to de-trigger. That's where it's great to call in spirit guides and angels to be like, I'm going to tell this story. Help me rewrite how it ends. Help me release the attachment and the charge. 
and why going out and sometimes telling campfire stories is great is because when you're in a space of no judgment, you can start to be aware of what you're attached to because it's not going to be coming so much from so many people outside to where your mind's not going to be so much of it's what this person thinks or this person thinks because they're not there or there's just not as much noise because you're just away from it. And start to become aware of your own body sensations and how you tighten up versus how you release. When you take deep breaths, when your eyebrows get close together, when your shoulders go up. Having space, getting out of the routine allows you to actually have a little bit more opportunity for mindfulness. And the space, it's funny, I was just writing notes where I know like... Some of this, like when I talk about this camping trip, and again, wow, I'm all over the place. I might not even publish this one to a podcast. This is for you, like exclusive. Um, A lot of my life for the last year has felt like pushing a rock up a hill. And I've been exhausted and, and just wondering like what, what something's got to give. Something's got to give. But you know what? I wouldn't. I wouldn't give. I wouldn't give the space. But when we operate that way, then something breaks and it's usually us. It's usually our health. It's a relationship that matters to us because if we're just so inflexible and unwilling to let anything go, it doesn't give, it breaks. And that's when we're actually broke. Being broke has nothing to do with money. It's being refusing of space. There's no flow. That's how we end up broke. Whether it's emotionally bankrupt or financially bankrupt, it doesn't matter. When we refuse to give space to ourselves, to others, to the process. And what space does, how we experience space a lot of times, is distance. It's not exactly the same, but that space, there will be a little bit of distance between me and my thoughts to where I actually start to see me as the thinker and the thoughts as things to where I don't have to attach to them anymore. Whoa, that's an interesting thought. Wonder what that's based on. Not really, not going to give a lot of curiosity to it, but let's look at what can thoughts be based on. Your physiology. Are you hungry? Are you dehydrated? Did you eat something that really wasn't good for you? Like when I eat way too much gluten, I have stupid thoughts. How are your hormones for women and men? You know, like around PMS, I just be like, don't believe anything you think when you look in the mirror, okay? Because for whatever reason, three days before I start my cycle, I just think I look awful. And I just have to be like, just don't make any choices based on that, okay? Don't start a diet. Don't quit a diet, okay? Like, just don't do or exercise program or whatever. Like, just don't. Just let it roll. Like thunder, just let it roll, okay? But then it's interesting that this will also even include good thoughts, which we never think about. I didn't even until this this weekend when some happy memories were starting to surface. And I was like, oh, no, maybe that means I need to go back and do this thing or like hurry up and try to like reconcile like and and rush and try to get things back to the way they were because these memories are great. When it's really just they are bubbling to the surface to go just like the yuck. When we decide we're going to change, when we declare independence from whatever it is that's been holding us back, anything that's not congruent is going to come up. And all our subconscious is doing is saying anything that's associated is going to come up. Anything that has that was associated with that. So it can be good or bad, but we can stick ourselves just as easily with good things, thinking now I've got to do my best to get back to what that was or do my absolute utmost to keep it just how it is this way because I'm not going to give this up. Then we're attached, then we're dependent, and then we're not free. And for the most part, what we're talking about is our thoughts about ourselves and what's happening to us, what has happened to us, and how we're interpreting it, and how much emotion we're investing into it. When really freedom is actually going to come from not being attached to anything, letting it come up. And yeah, you might at first feel like an airhead and be like, oh, like mine? I'm pretty adventurous. This is what's interesting. And so I'm kind of along for the ride sometimes and I was even judging myself of being like wow Joy Lynn you don't really have any strong preferences like you'll just do anything so no wonder life isn't going the way you want because you don't even take the time to like think about what you want when the truth is not always but in this scenario I like it all I don't have a strong preference I'm actually free 
to experience and happy to experience a variety of things. And any one of them would be fine because I actually just set the intention in the beginning and so then every, everything could be as it was. That's, that's freedom. But then when I think it should look a different way, I should be a different way, I should have more thoughts or feelings on this or that, that's when we get stuck. And it's all sort of ridiculous because it all just loops on to itself. Judgment requires judgment to stay. So judgment begets judgment. You just get like it, it more exponentializes than it does just adds, okay? But also know then that when we take a judgment away, a whole lot of them crumble. So that's also good news. When we stop judging ourselves for anything, a lot of cards fall. So there's so much freedom to be had when we just start to be willing to witness our thoughts and see them as thoughts instead of seeing them as truth and reacting to it or feeling it, thinking our thoughts and, and having an immediate feeling and then trying to mitigate or change our emotional experience. How we know, and I've talked about this in Power Hour, is how loud is it up there? How intense and how absolutely imperative is it to do something right now? Because if you're feeling like, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, I just can't sit still, oh, oh. I gotta do something, I gotta, you know, I gotta make this call, I gotta do this, I have a million things to do. That's usually our mind. No, not usually, that's our mind. The heart is that small, still voice that unfortunately, and sometimes inconveniently, says something once and then not again for quite a while because it said, I said it once and I said it clear and I said it firm. I just didn't shout it because I didn't need to because it was the truth. So sometimes getting to stillness and being able to not wrestle with the restlessness, but to set it down and let it be, like to not react to it, to actually just witness, this is what restlessness feels like inside my magical meat suit. I can just tell. I feel like I got ants crawling up my leg, but they're like inside my leg, and I just want to get up and jump and do something. Because I just don't want to sit still. Sometimes if we just sit still, we'll hear the heart. And what's interesting is sometimes the heart's saying, get up and dance. So maybe it was just ants in your pants because you actually just wanted to dance. Isn't it confusing? It is. But listen to how intense and how frenetic it is. That's going to be from the mind, from the ego, from the subconscious being like attaching to things, associating things, saying this is who we are. This is how it's got to be. This is how we keep us safe. To where the heart, who knows, you're the one making the thoughts. You're the one having the feelings and thinking the thoughts is creating the feelings and having the feelings is creating the thoughts. You're behind all that and we're always safe. There's not a thing that could harm us because we're infinite. Now, would we'll also watch out for your best interest? Yeah, intuition is, is going to make sure that that's, that's part of what the subconscious, they are, they are partners. It's starting to trust our safety and know that we can ensure our safety. Be an agent and an advocate for our safety. So don't do stupid fucking shit including deteriorate yourself slowly and painfully with all this burden of negative thinking. Reconfiguration is going to happen, can only happen when things fall apart first. It's almost like we had to inject some space, which will kind of feel like things are falling apart, but they're just kind of just getting some space in there. And they'll come back together. And I had a, a friend, just a dear, dear friend, when I was in medical school, Broderick. And he said, like, when things felt like they were falling apart, he's like, yeah, just imagine, like, you're carrying two grocery sacks. You know, you've been carrying them for a really long time. It's starting, the handles are starting to cut into your hands. You know, and then they just break. The bottoms break. And we all act like, fuck, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. The timing is horrible. Now my shit's all over the ground. He's like, but now you get to see what was in those bags. And you actually start to realize that half this stuff you didn't need. Half the stuff was for somebody else. Some of these things were just because you just got it and you, you didn't even know if you need it because you didn't check your cabinet to see if you did or not. You just always use it so you thought you had to have it. Some of it was something that you used to like, but you actually don't like it anymore. He's like, so then when you actually put the stuff back in your bags, you realize you don't need that much stuff. You actually just leave it to sit in the melting snow. 
and and go about your merry way. We get attached to who we've been. We get attached to the thoughts about who we are and what's happened to us. I know I do this. I talk all the time. But we get out of the blame game. The trauma story is just to let you know there's nothing wrong with you. (laughs) There is no inherent mark on you that says you can't have a good life. It's just some shit happened at a time when you were emotionally salient and your brain waves opened up to where everything you received all at once got kind of jumbled, okay, in the brain. If you're going to heal from that, that shit's got to get unjumbled and that might actually feel a little disorienting. But if you can roll with it and not get attached to stuff, things will start to reconfigure in a coherent way, especially if your intention is to heal. That's how, like our magical meat suit, our soul. We are infinite. We are part of infinite intelligence. It wants to organize around health and divinity and perfection. It's going to come together better if we let it. So we can't attach to these thoughts and keep telling these horror stories. We just want ghost stories to say, wow, this is kind of funny. Listen to how this happened. You won't believe this. And how you'll know which story you're telling is your magical mutes is going to let you know by how closed and tight you feel versus if you're willing to laugh at it and look at it as something that almost happened to somebody else because it did. It was the past you that it happened to. But you've all integrated and healed, so now you're the present you, and now you're looking to the future to become someone else. This is how we do it. You tell your story in a safe space. You start to actually be someone that you can tell your story to without believing it all. That's a learned skill. That's what you get when you work with me. You start to get to know you as someone that you can tell your story to that isn't instantly buying it and adding on to it and making it heavier. You start to become a witness, an observer, somebody who actually challenges the negative thought because it is in opposition to what you want for your magical future. That's what you learn with me. But you actually become a safe space to tell your story And that little one gets to heal and feel heard so that when no other human being is around and you can't go back and get it from the parents that should have given it to you, and I wish they would have, they just weren't capable, but you still were at a deficit, but now you can fulfill that. You can fulfill the need. You be the person that's a safe space to tell your story without buying all the bullshit So that you can actually heal. Have you ever noticed this with little kids? Like you just tell the story. Okay. You just listen to the story. And they're like, okay, I'm done. That's all. It just needed to be told. And then sometimes when, when, you know, they'll be like, oh, and, and this deer had two heads and one was a chicken head. You're like, oh, really? Is that true? No, it's not. So when you're like, oh, because I'm a worthless human being and nobody's ever going to love me. Really? Is that true? No, it's not. So let's stop. Okay. And know now that at any time you can pick up the pen, write your Declaration of Independence, and a new ending, beginning of an ending, to a story because it's just going to keep going. It's going to be exciting. You are the writer of the ghost story that you're going to tell about your history, your own personal history. And you're going to write into existence what's going to be true for you. I would absolutely love, delight, and be honored if I could escort you on this journey to your Declaration of Independence, you stepping into an even greater sense of sovereignty and autonomy to be able to teach you and you witness yourself as somebody who challenges those negative thoughts and like, oh, yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. Not doing that anymore. Okay, I'm going to have something else. I want to be the one that you text because when you work with me, you get uh, messenger access to me to be like, oh my God, Joy Lynn, I just did this because I'm going to understand what a tremendous victory that is. I'm also happy and honored to be sometimes the space, the model 
and the space for you to tell your story. Because at first you're not going to know how. Because no, if they didn't, if, if it wasn't shown to you, you don't know how. Nature might be your only place. But I can be a space for that because I've done this a bunch of times. It's always easier to do it for someone else first. And then you start to do it for yourself. This is what you get when you work with me. I love this work. I want more happy, independent, strong badasses on the planet who are loving nature, seeing nature as the gift that she is, and then being spacious beings for themselves and then for other people so that we can stop spreading our pain and start spreading space and allowing more healing to happen. That's what I'm all about. That's actually the bottom line of this Power Hour, even though it took us a half hour to get there. And thank you so much for riding with me on this very interesting uh, word journey. And I would love to talk to you about working with you. So go to ihappenthings.com, click on the button to schedule a call for clarity, or on the Facebook post, you can just DM me, just send me a message, and we'll set up a time to talk. And I'm the one you talk to because I answer all the calls because I like this stuff. I love talking to you. And I'll set you up with a resource, but I think we're going to work well together and you're going to get farther, faster than you ever imagined, especially if you do the three-month self-love switcheroo because you can learn a lot in a short amount of time. I am going to stop there because now I'm rambling and I look forward to talking to you again next week for the next Power Hour. Happy Fourth of July, one day late, and happy Independence Day to you And looking forward to hearing you tell your ghost stories, your personal history in a way that is not charged and totally free and fueling your fire into your future. All right. Love you dearly.